What is the most common symptom of uterine fibroids? Your options are weight gain, heavy menstrual bleeding, severe headaches, or frequent urination. The correct answer is B that is heavy menstrual bleeding. Uterine fibroids often cause menorrhea that is heavy menstrual bleeding due to increased blood flow in the uterus caused by the fibroid size and location. Question number 2. Which of the following is the definitive diagnostic method for endometriosis? Your options are ultrasound, laparoscopy, CT scan or MRI. The correct answer is B that is laparoscopy. Laparoscopy is a minimally invasive procedure that allows direct visualization of endometrial tissue outside the uterus, making it the gold standard for diagnosis. Question number 3. Adenomyosis is best described as the presence of endometrial tissue in the myometrium, peritoneum, fallopian tubes or cervix. The correct answer is A that is myometrium. Adenomyosis involves the invasion of endometrial tissue into the uterine muscle layer that is called as myometrium, leading to pain and heavy bleeding. Question number 4. What is the most common risk factor for uterine prolapse? Two options are smoking, obesity, multiparity or sedentary lifestyle. The correct answer is C that is multiparity. Multiple vaginal deliveries weaken the pelvic floor muscle, increasing the risk of uterine prolapse. Question number 5. Endometrial hyperplasia is commonly caused by estrogen axis, progesterone deficiency, testosterone dominance or low cortisol levels. The correct answer is A that is estrogen axis. Unopposed estrogen stimulates excessive growth of the endometrial lining leading to hyperplasia, especially in perimenopausal women. Question number 6. What is the mainstay treatment for uterine fibroids in women desiring fertility? Two options are hysterectomy, myomectomy, endometrial ablation or hormonal therapy. The correct answer is B that is myomectomy. Myomectomy is a surgical procedure to remove fibroids while preserving the uterus, making it suitable for women wishing to maintain fertility. Question number 7. Which uterine disorder is commonly associated with cyclic pelvic pain? Two options are endometriosis, adenomyosis, uterine fibroids or uterine cancer. The correct answer is A that is endometriosis. 
endometriosis causes pelvic pain that typically worsen during menstruation due to inflammation and scarring caused by displaced endometrial tissue question number 8 which uterine condition is most commonly associated with postmenopausal bleeding two options are endometrial cancer uterine fibroids adenomyosis or uterine prolapse the correct answer is a that is endometrial cancer postmenopausal bleeding is a hallmark symptom of endometrial cancer and warrants immediate evaluation for early detection question number 9 What is the most common pathogen causing pelvic inflammatory disease PID leading to uterine infections? Your options are Chlamydia trachomatis, Escherichia coli, Streptococcus pyogenes or Staphylococcus aureus. The correct answer is A that is chlamydia trachomatis chlamydia is the leading cause of pid that is pelvic inflammatory disease which can result in endometritis and scarring of the reproductive organs question number 10 the most common type of uterine cancer is sarcoma endometrial carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma or adenosarcoma the correct answer is b that is endometrial carcinoma endometrial carcinoma arises from the uterine lining and is the most prevalent uterine malignancy of a link to estrogen exposure Question number eleven. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Dear Competitive Exam YouTube channel. Today you are attending hundred most repeated and most important question answer session based on. And this is the part one of this series. So let's challenge your quality of learning. Let's see what will be your score from this part one. So do watch this video completely. to make yourself more fit to answer any kind of questions and at the end if you find this video helpful then please do like subscribe and share this video to all your friends who are preparing for upcoming any kinds of medical exams let's continue question number 11 which diagnostic tool is most commonly used to evaluate uterine fibroids your options are mri ultrasound hysteroscopy hysteroscopy or ct scan the correct answer is b that is ultrasound trans abdominal or trans vaginal ultrasound is the first line imaging modality for detecting and assessing uterine fibroids question number 12 What is the primary symptom of adenomyosis? Two options are dyspareunia, a painful intercourse; dysmenorrhea, a painful menstruation; urinary incontinence; or amenorrhea. The correct answer is B. That is dysmenorrhea, a painful menstruation. Adenomyosis frequently causes painful and heavy periods due to the invasion of endometrial tissue into the uterine wall. Question number 13. A chocolate cyst, a chocolate cyst 
in the ovary is most commonly associated with which uterine disorder? Show options are endometriosis, uterine fibroids, uterine cancer or pelvic inflammatory disease. The correct answer is A that is endometriosis. A chocolate cyst endometrioma is a result of endometrial tissue growing on the ovary and accumulating old blood. Question number 14. What hormone is predominantly responsible for endometrial hyperplasia? Show options are progesterone, estrogen or cortisol. The correct answer is B that is estrogen. Prolonged estrogen stimulation without opposing progesterone leads to excessive growth of the endometrial lining, resulting in hyperplasia. Question number 15. Which procedure is both diagnostic and therapeutic for uterine polyps? Show options are hysteroscopy, laparoscopy, ultrasound or endometrial biopsy. The correct answer is A that is hysteroscopy. Hysteroscopy allows direct visualization and removal of uterine polyps, serving both diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Question number 16. Which uterine disorder often resolves after menopause? Two options are adenomyosis, uterine fibroids, endometriosis or endometrial cancer. The correct answer is B that is uterine fibroids. Fibroids shrink after menopause due to a decline in estrogen levels which stimulate their growth. Question number 17. Which imaging technique is most useful in diagnosing adenomyosis? Show options are MRI, CT scan, ultrasound or X-ray. The correct answer is A that is MRI. MRI provides detailed imaging of the uterine wall, making it the most accurate tool for diagnosing adenomyosis. Question number 18. What is the most common complication of the uterine fibroids during pregnancy? Show options are preterm labor, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, or miscarriage. Miscarriage. The correct answer is A that is preterm labor. Fibroids can distort the uterine cavity and cause mechanical stress leading to preterm labor or complications during pregnancy. Question number 19. Which hormonal therapy is commonly used to treat endometriosis? Show options are estrogen, GnRH agonist, corticosteroids or thyroid hormones. The correct answer is B that is GnRH agonist. The GnRH agonist suppress estrogen production, reducing endometrial tissue growth and associated pain in endometriosis. Question number 20. 
uterine prolapse is most often treated initially with hysterectomy, cesarean replacement, physical therapy or hormonal therapy. The correct answer is B that is cesarean replacement. A pessary is a non-surgical device used to support the uterus and elevate symptoms of prolapse. Question number 21. Which of the following is a risk factor for developing endometrial cancer? Your options are early menopause, long-term use of oral contraceptives, Polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS, or tubal ligation? The correct answer is C, that is polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS. Polycystic ovary syndrome increases the risk of endometrial cancer due to prolonged unopposed estrogen exposure from, from an ovulation. Question number 22. Which uterine disorder is commonly associated with infertility? Show options are endometriosis, uterine fibroids, adenomyosis or all of the above. The correct answer is B that is all of the above. Endometriosis, fibroids and adenomyosis can affect fertility by interfering the implantation, uterine structure or ovulation. Question number 23. The typical treatment for uterine cancer in its early stages is Chemotherapy Radiation surgery or hormonal therapy? The correct answer is C that is surgery. A hysterectomy often combined with removal of ovaries and fallopian tubes is the primary treatment for early stage uterine cancer. Question number 24. What is the most common complication of untreated pelvic inflammatory disease, PID? Show options are Uterine prolapse Chronic pelvic pain Endometrial hyperplasia or Uterine fibroids The correct answer is B that is chronic pelvic pain, PID Pelvic inflammatory disease can lead to scarring and inflammation in the reproductive organs, causing persistent pelvic pain. Question number 25. Which type of uterine fibroids are most likely to cause heavy menstrual bleeding? Show options are submucosal, subserosal, Intramural or pedunculated? The correct answer is A that is submucosal. Submucosal fibroids growth beneath the inner lining of the uterus, distorting the endometrial cavity and causing heavy bleeding. Time is to comment your score out of 25 questions and friends thanks for joining us on this exciting journey if you enjoyed the quiz and learned something new then give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our upcoming exploration of fascinating topics in the medical field until the next time stay curious stay healthy see you